Hello and welcome back to Alan Wake. Now, if you missed it, I think uh, things are getting, I think the scientific term um, is royally fucked up. Shit is getting real. You see that little blinking light down there? That's Mott the Kidnapper, who just revealed via medium of shouting that he doesn't have our wife, his boss was manipulating him, and Barbara Jagger's a bit pissed off. So Mott is about to be, um, well, let's just say, I'm assuming his limbs are going to go in different directions to the central part of him, if you catch my drift. Um, so we're going to go down and see what's happening to him, and essentially go back to having no leads as to where uh, Alice is. Um, but, unsurprisingly, the whole Mott thing was a big red herring. There he is. Oh, I thought he was on the boat. Care who you are, that's not survivable. chapter. End of episode three. Oh what? my, oh my, what a wretched life I was born <laughs> on the day. Anyway, episode three. Previously Sorry about that. On <laughs> Wake. I'm haunted by the law. Sheriff, Wake's running. I'm giving chase. Are you seriously telling me that writer just took out my deputies? A thriller I supposedly wrote is coming true. The genre of the story seems to be shifting. It's turning into a horror story. I was told that Alice had been kidnapped, but that was a lie. We don't have his wife. We don't know where she is. Her purported kidnapper was eaten up by the Dark Presence before it attacked me. Episode 4, The Truth. Mm. Alan, shh, baby. It was just a nightmare. Alice. Hartman, I fell. I had to give you a sedative. Don't fight it. I... You went through another rough period. What? Right now, it's very important that you stay calm. We don't want you to have another episode. You're a patient at my clinic. Have been for a while now. The shock of your wife's death triggered a mental illness. No, you're... you lie. You're suffering from various symptoms of undifferentiated schizophrenia. Fast. It's okay, Alan. Just let go. Yeah. I felt groggy. Whatever Hartman had bumped in me was making me numb. I felt like this was happening to someone else. Someone I was watching on television. I couldn't think. Couldn't focus. Yeah, this ain't good. It looks like Hartman's taking advantage of us. He's feeding, he's like feeding, uh, I can't, again, I can't remember the names of things, but it's like, you know, confusion, he's supplying false memories. He's trying to make us believe that, yeah, that was all just a hallucination and we've actually been here for the last few good years or whatever. Ellen. Are we feeling better now? Feeling calm? Yeah. I see you brought your pet gorilla with you. So sure, I'll <laughs> come. I get the message, loud and clear. Quite right. That's the spirit? You're being very brave, Alan. Mm. I understand you're confused. I would be more concerned if you weren't suspicious of me. I don't blame you for it. Big of you. <laughs> now, why don't you come with me? 
We'll reacquaint you with my clinic and go over everything you might have forgotten. Little walk and some fresh air? Yes, it will do you good. Yeah, you're just all beige, aren't you? Beige on the inside, this beige on the outside. Patients. Most of them aren't here hey, right gorilla. now. Jack took them out for a fishing trip. Except for the ones who are particularly vulnerable, of course. I encourage creativity as a part of the recovery process here at Cauldron Lake Lodge. I specialize in treating artists. I bet you do. Splendid, Alan. I honestly believe we can get this thing under control if we work together. Hmm. This way, Alan. You got any medicine for a undead darkness woman? Oh god, look at this bloody lift. A wooden lift. There's a novelty. Now, Alan, from past experience with you, I know I need to get right into the heart of the matter as quickly as I can after an episode. So I'm just going to say this. Alice is dead. No. You're in a very vulnerable state until you understand and accept this. Alice drowned. And you couldn't face that. You're suffering from hallucinations, paranoid delusions, unusual thinking, an obsession about light and darkness, a feeling that everything revolves around you, your thoughts and dreams. Your mind has constructed an elaborate fantasy scenario in which your writings are affecting reality. She has been kidnapped and supernatural forces of darkness are trying to stop you. This would all be, this way, Alan. you know, I wasn't ready for another shot, so I went along with it. He had to be lying, but under the influence of the drug he had given me, I had to fight not to believe his words. Just call Barry. It's all in your <laughs> head. You've been making it up. Apart from the tragic accident with your wife, no one has been killed. Your delusions are just a manifestation of your subconscious mind trying to protect you from the too painful truth. Yeah, what about the other people, the people that are missing? Fantasy, it will return. I know the instinct is to resist me, but think about it. Doesn't this make far more sense than the insane supernatural conspiracy you have concocted in your mind? You're a skeptic by nature, Alan. We both know this. Everything can be explained logically. I mean, I know Dr. Hartman's just trying to corrupt Alan, but, you know, there are other people who could verify it. If Alan can get in contact with them, which makes me think again that Dr. Hartman is not really operating in uh, good faith. That's a cool sundial, though. I dig that. Can I walk on it? Can I jump on it? No. <laughs> I never get tired of this view. Very inspiring, isn't it? Cauldron Lake spread below us. I could see Mira Peak on the other side of the lake. Oh, there I it thought is. thought I could make out the spot where Diver's Isle had been when I arrived with Alice. Okay. Now there was nothing but waves. I can't see shit. It seems there's a storm coming. Funny, I don't recall there being a mention of that in the weather forecast. Well, no matter. Ominous. This way, follow me. Winds howling. Alan, what I'm telling you is good news. Right now we're in control. Every time you have a relapse, it gets more and more difficult to resurface from the dark depths of your imagination. Not surprising, considering your profession. Imagination is what you work with. After all your nightmares, this should come as an immense relief to you. If it doesn't, why is that? Because I'm lying? Or because you don't want to admit that you're not well? Yeah, thank it's you. It's very natural for you thank to you, Dr. Hartman. me as your enemy. It's part of the illness. I let him talk. All, <laughs> he obviously <laughs> loved his own voice. His words echoed madly yourself. inside my head. But I, I dug my nails into the palms of my hands to stay you focused. To work with Liar, they're open. Once you accept that, oh, just mean walk backwards for a second there. Towards your recovery. Come along. Let's go inside. Yes, into Dr. Hartman's fun time fun land. Look at this place. Here's the entrance to the office wing. That's for staff only. You were impressed by my trophies when you first arrived here. I love to hunt. The great outdoors. No, I wasn't, mate. I think that's disgusting, to be honest with you. It's wonderful stuff. Pretty damn wonderful, yeah. Congratulations, you killed an innocent animal, beheaded it, scary, stuck scary, its head on the wall. Scary. Got the fucking oh, everywhere. Yeah. Is, that a, is that a moose? <laughs> Also, hey, man. I'm 
I mean, your neck just goes on forever, doesn't it? You should be afraid of me. Don't want to run into me in the night. That's for sure. Alan, yeah. Is that a fourth wall break there? He's looking at me like, yeah, this fucking guy. Yeah, you'd like me to go away so you won't be scared. But you can't just decide what kind of dream you have or when you have it. Emerson. Okay. Okay. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Boo. That's Emerson. We're actually making some progress with him. I'm happy to say <laughs> he works on video Elbow games. Strike. Ooh, it's yeah. trash, of yeah. course, but yeah. it does involve I'll some small creative effort, which makes him receptive to my therapeutic methods. Yes. No, video games aren't creative. They're shit. Hey, lady. So are you? And the same to you. Hey, buddy. Come, Alan. This way. Now. You might have noticed. Just close the fucking door on me. In your room. You've been writing as a part of the therapy. As soon as you feel up to it, you should continue. Hey, what's in the bare room? I'll read. Where reading? This poster. There's the real Doctor Hartman. Where reading the bear? Ah. Welcome to Cauldron Lake Lodge. We're here to give you specialized help you need. Please observe the following. Family and friends must schedule visits beforehand to ensure they don't interfere with your therapy uh, and or periods of creativity or tell you that Dr. Hartman is abusing you for your cash. Also, please respect your fellow patient's need for privacy and personal space, especially when they're enraged by the creative processes or starting to realise that the outside world exists again. Typically, our patients have long-term creative problems and they won't be solved overnight. Give yourself permission to take the time you need. Bear in mind that you're voluntarily receiving treatment that has been specifically tailored for you. Vol voluntarily engagement therapy trademark and its sister method the flow trademark work best when you are actively engaged in shaping them if you have any concerns please don't hesitate to keep them to yourself hey it's Tor and the other Anderson Odin I think his name is there's a storm coming oh what a storm night springs the board game it wipes this place off the face of the earth and these two are the Anderson brothers, Odin and Tor. They had a, how should I put this, a heavy metal band in the 70s and 80s called Old Gods of Asgard. They even adopted new first names to complete the image of Viking gods. After the band broke up, they lived on a farm nearby. They are, well, in advanced stages of dementia. They're well cared for, TLC and all that. There's nothing more that can be done. I'm afraid that the rock and roll lifestyle has left its mark. They still got their fashion sense, though. No, oh, that won't do. I'm so sorry to cut this short. For now, Alan, the power has been acting up. I'd better go check on it. We'll continue this soon. Meanwhile, when you feel up to it, return to your room and try to write. It really is for the best. Hmm. Don't you think? Piss off, mate. I'd like to bash his head in with a hammer. Oh, he'd love to fish out our secrets, but he has no clue. He's not crazy enough. <laughs> not crazy like us, Sonny. Yeah! <laughs> <Being> <laughs> crazy's a requirement, Sonny. Who else could understand the world when it's like this? It takes crazy to know crazy. That's the sanest thing I've heard in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Say, you're all right, Tom. Hey, we like him, don't we, bro? He's got to go to the farm. The Anderson Farm. Valhalla. We wrote it all down, lest we to forget. A crash course. All you need to know to get your head right. You need to find the message. Here, Sonny, here's something for you. Gave me a rash, but I kept it safe from these bastards. Jeez. I don't want to know where you kept that. Oh, we got a manuscript page. Thomas Zane's writing an assistant. Zane could feel the poems taking form, shaping things. As he experimented, he imagined he could almost feel the power surging through the keys of the typewriter. It exhilarated him. But there was fear, too. If not for his young assistant, Emil, he would have given it up. But Emil convinced him otherwise. He, too, had a way with words. My head was clearing okay. up. Or, according to Hartman, I was sinking back into the fantasy. 
I was convinced he was lying to me about everything. Crazy or not, the Andersons made more sense. Tom, got any booze on you? Yeah, uh, no. <laughs> Sorry, we have guys. a stash of the special stuff at the farm. Our own formula. Local ingredients. Medicine clears your head right up. Makes you remember like moonbeams on the brain. Oh, I just noticed. Leather patches on <laughs> That's what I've been That's saying. Not very rock and roll. Yeah, Tom man. Just lost is all. Baba Yaga got to him too, the damn witch. She used us all, taken from all of us. Took my thunder, the witch. And my ravens, what was, what were they? Memory and thought, the hag. She took something from you too, didn't she? That's what she does. Um, we're better off. This place, the lake, it gives you power. If you're a creator, an artist, a god. I miss shifted in their sleep in the darkness of the lake. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. She makes sure it comes out twisted and wrong. Just ask the lamp lady. She knows what happened to that other rider. She's been using you, boy, and you let her. You went and opened the door for her, didn't you? Now, now, it was already open a crack. And whose fault is that? We're morally corrupt, disease-ridden, old and stupid. <laughs> Doesn't mean he had to open it all the way, goddammit. Ah, uh, for... Sorry about for just uh, listening to those guys, but some good, good plot there. Right. I see if I can go anywhere else in here. There's a guy painting out there, and I want to go and talk to him. Bad dream. You can't wake up. Hey, this guy. Hey, buddy. Hmm. Oh, hello. I've painted you. Okay. I was just struck by inspiration a couple of days ago. Dr. Hartman wanted me to paint landscapes, and that's what I was doing. But now I've been doing these things, a lot of them. The images just keep coming. Dr. Hartman likes them. He has them in his office. Yeah? He's very proud mm. of me. He says I'm getting much better. I think I'm getting better. Well, that is a certainly a, a something there. I'd rather you didn't paint me looking uh, quite so terrified. I I'd better start wrapping this up. The storm is almost here. Look at that. I'd hate to be out there tonight. Guess who's going to be out there tonight? <laughs> it's the writers who want to make everything from the characters to the toasters. Alright, this guy's exhausting, so we'll uh, just go back to our roommate. Hey, wake. Why don't you humor Dr. Hartman and give the writing a shot, huh? Typewriter's in your room. You can get to your room by those stairs, wake. Thanks, man. Oh, excuse me, let me just steal Dr. Hartman's coffee thermos. <laughs> That'll teach the bastard. <laughs> Something's wrong. I'm not myself. It's Wait. hard to think. There's a shadow inside my head. I can oh, only focus on writing. Everything else is a blur. I'm trapped in this cabin. Have been hey, for buddy. days, but it's always dark outside. My editor is real. I saw her again. She's not human. It's not human. A dark presence is wearing the old woman's face. She was covered in clinging shadows. There's a hole in her chest where her heart should be. I think I've made a horrible mistake. I don't think I'm any closer to saving Alice. It's been lying to me, using me to get the story it wants. And the story will come true. Well, at least we didn't bust this TV. There's no smoke coming out of it. Anywho, I think again we're going into cutscene land. Sorry, it's been a very talky episode, um, but it's a talky part of the game. That will be... Oh, hey. Hey there, buddy. You stuffed an owl? You bastard. Hartman wanted me to write. I knew I couldn't, but I figured I should just play along for now. It was the only thing I could do with Nurse Birch watching me like a hawk. I'm guessing that's the big dude. Anyway, we'll, we'll attempt to write next episode. So thank you so much for watching. If you like my content, please do check out my other videos. If you do, I shall see you there. Goodbye.